this week, three sides of the coin, we go into the process of creating the new Ace Fraley album, 10,000 Volts. We're joined by Steve Brown, Joey Casada, and boy, do they take us behind the scenes on how this was written, recorded, and the whole process of making this album. Let it roll. We'll see you. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides. Are you looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise, T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We ship. Everybody, Three Sides of the Coin, you got all four of us. Why? Because this is kind of a cool episode. We're going to be joined in just a minute or two by Joey Casada, who's back again, and Steve Brown, who worked with and produced the new Ace Fraley album, 10,000 Volts. Yep. Um, not a track-by-track track review this week. That will come at a later date. And as you'll see, Mark came all prepared for that track-by-track track review, but keep those notes. Um, we're not going to do any comments, Tommy. I don't think there's anything else happening really in the Kiss world other than you're watching this. Ace Fraley's new album is out on the streets. Go get a copy. And um, should we just go straight into the interview, guys? Yeah, I think that works. So let it roll. We got Joey and we got Steve talking about process, the songwriting, how the album came together, some little tidbit. He, Steve drops a hint, not a hint, outright tells us what was a song that Ace was considering covering on this album. First time I'd heard about this. So let it roll and we'll see you at the end. Visit three sides of the coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube, follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your. Do you not know okay. which podcast you're a part God, of? God, three three sides of the coin. I should have hit the record button about ten minutes ago when Mark <laughs> first got here. So we, what? So I, everyone can and, watch and, this. And, and 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 I just told him I go. So I, I'm oh, I'm fuck, kind of doing the pre up. the pre show briefing for our guests. <laughs> we've we've got Joey and we've got Steve Brown here joining us. We're going to be talking to Ace. But I was pre show briefing. I'm like. I don't think this is a show where we're going to do a track by track review. And Mark's like, you're fucking kidding me. I did all the work to get ready for this. <laughs> so if Mark leaves early or gets cranky, it's because we're not playing by his rules. Okay. I get it, man. Don't worry. I got thick skin. I can handle it all. So It's, so it's my world. So. I mean, we, we could we could do track by track reviews as we go along here, but I'm kind of more interested in, in picking the brains of Joey and Steve as to more of the the creation of the album than necessarily giving thumbs up and thumbs down to every single track. You know, if we yeah. want just to appease Mark, we could start off with a general is this a great I'm album this or not? Fucking thing. I'm telling you right now, I'm reading this fucking thing. <laughs> he finally took notes mike let him read it god damn it god damn yeah. should we just let mark run the show <laughs> might as well yeah, put Lisa on the screen and let mark talk well all i know is the puck drops at uh at, at seven o'clock wings are on there in the middle of the playoff we're we're, ba- we're battling hockey so. and food here so yeah we we our window's getting smaller Our um fantasy. joey steve thank you for sitting down with yes. three sides of the coin um, like I said, I'm really excited to kind of pick your guys' brain on on the creation of this album. Um, and and I mean, honestly, I don't know where. To, let's just start the conversation going. Steve, how did you get hooked up with Ace? We know you're a Kiss fan, but yeah. how did you end up producing this album with Ace? Well, this, you know, let's go back. Ace and I have been friends for the better part of 30 years. You know, I met him a long, long time ago. And, uh, you know, it started back in 1978, as we know the story. It was Ace Fraley, Kiss, Eddie Van Halen, and Van Halen. Those two bands changed my life forever. And I've been on a rock and roll fantasy journey ever since. And um, so fast forward to um, 
I'm going to say 2022, I believe it was. My other band, I have a band called Tokyo Motor Fit with uh, Ted band. Poley. Great band. Yeah, thank you. Ted Poley, Chuck Berge, uh, Greg Smith. And we made a couple records for Frontiers Records. Phenomenal, uh, phenomenal pieces of music that are uh, very uh, highly regarded in the, in the melodic rock world, if you will. And um, some people in Ace's camp, uh, John Astronomy, his production manager, Phil Dealey, who used to work for Trickster back in the day. And most importantly, Ace's fiance, Lara, who is a Jersey girl who PJ and I grew up with, PJ Farley from Trickster. She grew up a couple towns over from us. And all, all of a sudden, we did some shows um, in March, in February of 2022, I believe it was. And everybody was just going, dude, you and Ace got to get together. It was, I guess it was getting to that point where Ace had to start working on a new record for Monarch Heavy. And um, it was like, you know, sure, I'm into it. Let's do it. So in the back of my mind, I knew as being a songwriter for the better part of 40 years and working with a lot of different artists, I know that to prepare for this, you got to bring in some ideas that are going to suit that artist. And so for me, it was very easy because whether I'm writing, you know, if I'm going to write some ideas for, let's say, Def Leppard or, you know, Trickster or any band, if I'm writing for Bon Jovi, I'm going to give them stuff that's going to be great for them. And as a fan of all these bands, and most importantly, a lifelong Kiss fan and an Ace fan, I brought in ideas that I thought would be perfect, that I thought what all of us would go, what would us KISS fans want to hear? And that's what I did. And I sent him the first thing I sent him was Walking on the Moon. And um, it was originally titled something else, but it had the line in there. So it was Walking on the Moon, Fighting for Life, trying to think of some of the other ideas. Those were the two first two songs we worked on. But long story short, it took about three months before he finally listened to the ideas and uh, one day in summer of uh, 20 to last year, last summer, I get a call from him. No, not last summer, last uh, shit. I, I, I can't even get my day years straight now, but I believe it was 20. What am I thinking? 2020. Ooh. Yeah. Fall of 2022. I finally get a phone call from him. Thanks for helping me out on that. Um, and he goes, Steve. This, this stuff is great. You know, this song, Walking on the, you know, it's got to be called Walking on the Moon because it had that tagline in it. And sure enough, before you know it, we're already writing a song, but we haven't even been in the room together. And that's how it all started. And three days later, I was up at his house in Sparta, New Jersey, and we pretty much finished Walking on the Moon right there and then. And, uh, and that was the start of about, uh, you know, about a year, year long process of making this uh, 10,000 volts record. So let, let me ask, let me ask you, Steve, did this initially start out as just more of a, a co-writing and that evolved into you becoming involved in production and producing and more deeply involved? Yes, it was definitely a song for song. You know, we finished Walking on the Moon and then I I presented him with Fighting for Life, which is, you know, one of the great songs on the record. I, I believe you did a review of the record and I think that was one of your favorite tracks. That oh, was it, my it, song. It, it, yeah, I mean, I, you know, Mark, you, you're not allowed to chime in on your, your review here, <laughs> but I will tell everybody Fighting for Life without question, without hesitation, by far and away the best track on the new album and probably in my opinion the best track ace has released since in my since the fraley's comet debut album i mean it is just it's the kind of track where i was just like holy shit where have they been keeping this why aren't we getting yeah. an album's worth of material like this song this is a spectacular song. Mark, do you have one sentence you want to add to that? <laughs> well, I, all kidding aside, that too um, is, uh, is my favorite song on the record. And although with a caveat, I'm going to say that that song is better than everything off of uh, the debut Freely's Comedy album. However, wow. in my estimation, 
Because you can't count the 78 solo album. That one, you take that yeah. out, that's a total different animal. I'm going Trouble Walking and the new one. That's, it's, it's now, and that's, that's after only a few days of, of, uh, uh, of listening to it. I, I, I really like the 10,000 volts record a lot. Um, but there are some things I do want to go over. I mean, <laughs> it, especially times of drumming. I mean, oh, I mean, whoa, whoa. Sorry. Hey. Yeah, where the hell did Ace you. find that drummer? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Look, if I didn't bust Joey's fucking balls, they, this wouldn't, this, you know. I thought it was a drum normal. machine. <laughs> well, so, so, yeah. so Steve, Steve, back to the, the songs you started with, Walking on the yeah. Moon and Fighting for Life. Were these, were these songs, quote, in your bin of demos that you've been sitting on for, for a while, or did you Freshly create them just for Ace. Fresh, they're just what you said. Freshly baked, freshly created. Like I was saying before, if I'm going to work with an artist, I'm not going to rehash stuff that potentially other people have already heard. Even though I will give you guys a little bit of secret. The Walking on the Moon riff was something that I posted Right about the time that I was getting the calls that I was going to start working with Ace. And I posted a video of me. It's on my Instagram of me playing a Jimmy Page guitar that my friend friend lent me. It's one of 500 of the Black Les Pauls that he Gibson put out. And I was like, man, I got to do a video with this. And it was the riff for Walking on the Moon. So that's where it started. But long story short, no, everything that I brought in was specific and like i said it was my love for kiss and for ace to be able to because look look let's be let's be real here we all know the, the 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 ace records there's a lot of filler on those records and i don't mean any disrespect to anybody especially ace because we've had this conversation you know we all know ace is notoriously a little bit lazy and that he kind of, you know, he'll just go, ah, it's good enough. And so with that being said, I, it was my goal. And I told him after that first day of wor working on Walking on the Moon, I grabbed him by the shoulders and I said, dude, look me in the eye. If you trust me and I trust you and we do this together, I guarantee you we will make the best record or at least try to make the best record, the best Ace Fraley record that you've made since your 78 solo record. Because Freely's Comet, I really can't count as that because that's that's a that was a band. Todd Hallworth was a big part of that. Ace didn't sing half the songs, you know. So let's talk about Ace solo records and then get into the stuff that he's been doing, let's say, over the last 20 years. There are moments of brilliance on those records surrounded by a lot of mediocrity. So Ace and I both said to each other, and Ace was the one who said this. He goes, I want every song to be great. And I said, well, we're going to do that. And even the instrumental is going to be great. And it was definitely not an easy road getting there and getting to where we are now. But I can honestly say that these 11 tracks, and everybody's going to hear it tomorrow, a lot of it's leaked already. These 11 tracks are the best, most consistent. It's the best production. It's a lot of the best things that he's done since that 78 solo record. Take it or leave it, whatever you guys want to say, and go to Trouble Walking, a little, little fact. I think you guys know this. My producer, Bill Ray, who produced the first Trickster record, wrote Trouble Walking for Ace. And, um, but that's it. And again, man, I didn't do this for me. I didn't do this just for Ace. I did this for all of us. This is for all of us KISS fans and all of us ACE fans to be able to have a record that you can listen to from start to finish and go, yeah, this kicks ass, man. This is a really solid album. Well, I, I've got a couple of questions for both the two of you. I'm assuming, even though Joey and I have never talked about this and Steve, we've never met before, but do you guys listen to a lot of different music from different eras 
Okay. Oh, oh, of course. I mean, without, I, I without question. Everything. Of course. Oh, okay. I think that that was one of the things in my perception that was missing with him in some of these records. Because one of the things he said to me one day as we were driving around, I thought it was really weird. He's like, yeah, I don't listen to any music. I'm like, what do you mean you don't? He's like, I never listen to the radio. I don't. He doesn't know what's new. And I'm not saying you have to be up on everything, but it's just like, how do you write newer material if all you've got is Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and because at least from my perspective that's the one thing that I've always had an issue with is it feels like too much of it is just not as appealing to me because it's feels too old whereas this stuff is so much more fresh so I want to know I know it didn't happen by accident but is it because the two of you can bring fresh ideas that maybe other folks weren't bringing him I would certainly say, and look, we've taught Ace and I have talked about this numerous times in various interviews. There was a magic chemistry from day one and it was musical. It was personal. We became best friends and brothers. We are both guitar players. We're both artists and we just got along and we could joke with each other. And being that I have my own home studio here in in Ringwood, New Jersey, where I am right now, the Mojo Vegas 6160, world famous. And Ace has his place. It was very, it was a great working condition to be able to go to his house, hang out with him and Lara, make coffee, go down and work. And every day we worked, which is one of the really cool things, I'm a very hard worker. Joey can attest that I don't think there's anybody in this business who will work harder at whatever it is when it's making a record, preparing for a tour. Look, man, at 53 years old, going on 54 to stay in shape and be at the top of your game. It's a lot of work. I don't think people realize that. But with that being said, every day that we worked, we basically came out with a finished song. That first day that Ace and I worked on Walking on the Moon, he went up, he did four vocal takes. I would be sitting here, you know, doing this, and I'd yell back, sing this, girl, you saved me from disaster. He would go line for line, and I'd do four takes, and then I'd comp it together, and that's pretty much what we had. But from day one, there was an immediate friendship, a spark, and he lit up. And then I will tell you this, as soon as I made a rough mix of of Walking on the Moon and we sent it to the label, Scott Givens, the president of uh, Monarch Heavy, he wrote us both back and was like, dude, this is unbelievable. This is the best thing I've heard. And he privately messaged me and said, you got to keep this going. And that's what we did. And um, Fighting for Life was the next one. And I got to tell you, it's a funny story. And this is sort of how Joey came into the mix. Um, Of course, Ace, I told Ace, if we're going to do this, I have my team. I have my guys who I make records with. I use PJ Farley, who's played with me for close to 40 years with Trickster. He's one of the best rock bass players on the on the planet. He's like Hugh McDonald Jr., man. The guy, I don't have to tell him what to play. He knows exactly what I want. He does it. He's a bass player on 10,000 volts, and he did an incredible job recreating John Reagan's great bass parts on Back Into My Arms again. So it took, like what you were asking me, it took a little bit of convincing because to get my team involved, the trust factor, but Fighting for Life was a demo that I did, and Joey remembers hearing this. I programmed the drums and it sounded like Def Leppard because I used the Def Leppard drum samples. I wonder where I got them from. But (laughs) I learned very early, and this is how Joey came into the mix, that Ace hates drum machines. He hated the way because the, 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 the work track of Fighting for Life, which... I don't do demos. Everything that I record is probably going to be used in some way, shape, or fashion. And what you hear on the record is a, of Fighting for Life is a lot of the original work track, which is my rhythm guitars, my bass guitar. But Ace could not get past the drums because it was boom, cha, boom, cha. It was a drum machine. So I was like, for some reason, I'm going, Ace, why can't you hear this song? Because, it, you know, a lot of it is the way it was. The lyrics were different, some different melodies. But it was that chorus. 
And I go, what are you not hearing? And he goes, I can't get past the drum. So I called Joey up and I had Joey come up to my studio and had Joey play real drums to it. And that changed everything. And that was also how I was able to get Joey involved. And, and Ace had met Joey previously the year before when we did Creatures Fest. And Creatures Fest is also one of the reasons how all of this came to be because Ace and I and Lara, we hung a lot down there. And I got to give credit to Neil Davis, who put on Creatures Fest, who got me and Ace to, you know, I, I mean, I think even Neil said, oh, you and Ace would be great working together. But that was it. And it was every song after that. And then the third song we worked on was 10,000 Volts. And that was uh, an incredible story because I had this kid start messaging me messaging me on Instagram, this guy, David Julian, who co-wrote 10,000 Volts and also co-wrote Cosmic Heart. And he goes, dude, I'd really love to work with you. I got some great ideas. And I go, all right, send me something. He sent me a couple ideas and they were just fantastic. Like his production, his ideas. And I immediately, I hear something and I heard something that I haven't heard from anybody who sent me music in, in, in a long time. And I was like, there's something about this guy. And I'm like, all right, man, you want a shot? You know, it's like this, you want a shot at the title, Rocky? Here you go. <laughs> I'm working on the new Ace Freely record. This is what I want. I need something like we need a new, I, I had the idea, the title, 10,000 volts. And I said, I need something like shock me kind of. And I just went like to him over the phone. I go, give me something and eh, 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 now, now like firehouse. And lo and behold, he came back a couple days later with a couple of the key riffs, that main riff that's in 10,000 volts. We uh, he sent me that idea. I did a scratch vocal track for it, but I had the chorus. She hit me like 10,000 volts. Soon as I brought that over to Ace and we worked on that, we both looked at each other and we were like, this is undeniable. This is the best thing you've done in so long. And this is going to be the launch pad. And then it was just from there. It was song after song. And, uh, and then again, Joey, I had some other ideas in my head, which was I had uh, the blinded idea and cosmic heart, which is another one that David Julian wrote. So I had Joey come up because I knew no drum machines, no drum machines. <laughs> and Joey cut these drums, which I can't say they were demos, but they were just kind of the work idea. But Joey's such a great drummer and I got to give him credit that, you know, because I like to work quick and I don't give anybody that opportunity because man, when I put on my guitar and I go to record something, 90% of what I play all the way through is what's going to be on the record. So I was like, man, you got to get this, do this. Here's what I want. You know what to do. And, you know, I got to give Joey props that, <laughs> you know, and it, and it turned out that, you know, just by luck, Joey was able to wind up playing on half the album because it was one of those timing issues that right place, right time. And, you know, and then the one day, Joey, you remember when we did Constantly Cute, we did like four songs in one day and Ace was three hours late. Oh, he yes, got a flat I remember. Tire. And uh, Joey, I, Joe, we were cutting the vocals. We were going to do the vocals. Joey was here for eight hours. And I go, Joey, you can go home now. And Ace Thanks. is sitting here in my studio, right like a foot away. And he's going to cut vocals for Constantly Cute. I go, you want to go? And Joey looks at me, he goes, dude, <laughs> I ain't leaving this for nothing. There's no way I'm leaving this studio right now. That's awesome. Well, Joey, so Joey, I want to ask yeah. you something. All right. So I understand that you guys have a good working relationship. And I'm not a drummer. So... From a fan's perspective, when you get this demo or whatever you want to call it that has the drum on it, the, the drum track on it, and they want live drums, I'd like to understand how you how you how do you take it from the drum machine to the live drums? And then also too, I'd like to know as a backup after that, Steve, can you please explain to me what was Ace's hang up with the drum machine versus what Joey did, what what was the change? What makes it different for him? Yeah, so for me, I mean, long story short, how I got really involved in this, I remember Steve and I were at a wedding together. I think it was uh, November 22, maybe, right, Stevie? At Scott's yeah, wedding. Scott. And yeah. they had just done ten, uh, 
walking on the moon. And Steve brought me out, me and my other buddy brought me out to his car, said, dude, you gotta hear this. I'm working with Ace. And now you guys know me. I'm the, there's no bigger Kiss fan on the planet than I am, right? So I, you know, I'm salivating. I'm listen, I'm sitting in Steve's car. We're listening to uh Walking on the Moon. And I recognize it right away that this is really great stuff. And again, like Steve said, some of Ace's stuff in the past is all it's there's been moments of really great stuff on Anomaly and <clears throat> Spaceman and Space Invader, but there's a lot of filler tracks where I, as soon as I heard this, I said, oh my God, dude, this is incredible. Not only the production, which wasn't even finished yet, but the playing and the song quality. You know, Steve brought a lot of his pop sensibilities to Ace, which I always missed from, you know, those 90s or 2000 Ace records where I love the old Beerly's Comet. I love, you know, I love Unmasked Ace. I love Dun Dynasty Ace. I love that pop sensibility factor the melodic ace that i think we haven't had in god over 20 years I so when easily I heard, easily so when yeah. i heard walking on the moon you know i i you know i basically took steve by the throat i said dude if you don't get me involved in that i i'm here whenever you need me you call me i'm waiting by the phone whatever you need a demo a scratch track whatever you need you know they say the best ability is availability right so i made myself available whatever steve needed me to do I was there for him. So he, you know, he gave me um, a couple really rough scratch tracks of really not even songs. I mean, like stuff like Cosmic Heart do when you gave it to me and even <laughs> Constantly Cute. I remember the feel was totally different. And you and I were talking about, no, Ace yeah. wants this type of vibe. And I think it was more like a halftime vibe originally. So when Tommy, to answer your question, when Steve's giving me these rough tracks, I don't, I kind of don't even know where, what the song is. It's hard for me to even register what type of song it is. Sometimes there's no melody. Sometimes it's just a guitar riff. Sometimes it's just a little piece of a verse and a little piece of this. And I, I just keep laying down material over Steve's guitar scratch tracks. And, you know, then Steve will build it from there. You know, some of the stuff that made the record, I didn't even know what songs they were sometimes because I didn't realize what song it was until I heard more of the finished product because. Yeah. Even cos you know, something like Cosmic Heart, which was the last one we worked on, was so rough when I did it. I was just laying down ideas from what I heard from Steve's um rough track, you know, just some guitar, really some guitar riffs. And I said, Well, this is what I would play to this, and here's this part, and here's that part. And Steve, you know, being the producer that he is, just took all of those pieces and you know, you build a song in the studio. There's no, you know, there's no more back in the 80s and the 70s where Everyone's going into the studio together, writing together, building the song together in a studio. A lot of times it happens through the, these, this magic, which is production, where you know, you, you're just laying down basic tracks and the producer takes them and, and builds this song out of them. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that you kind of, in a roundabout way, answered my earlier question also even though steve you did too that it's the pop sensibility i think that's what i didn't know what to say that's what mm -hmm. i miss and so i don't i mean i know what i like and what i don't like it doesn't matter what i do or don't because it's in you know liking music is an individual thing but yeah i guess i still don't understand how as an artist you put out a record and you let so much filler onto some of the albums is it lack of, of ideas and, and help with songwriting? Well, I mean, I'm just happy that this is happening and that he's getting back to that pop sensibility because I think that's where he lives. That's his best stuff more than anything else. And that's not taking anything away from Cold Gin and Parasite and all that. But I, I love the Dynasty Ace. For me, that that's the best. So the poppier, the better. It's the mixture of Ace that's the best. It's, you know, yeah. that 78 solo album, of course, is untouchable. We yeah, all know that, number. right? Yeah. But yeah. It, but there's a mixture of songs on there. You know, you have Rip It Out and you then and you have, but then you also have What's On Your Mind and New York Groove. You know what I mean? There's there's these bangers like Fighting For Life, but then there's also these this pop song constantly cued and back in your arms again, where, you know, Ace is hitting all the gamuts rather than just going, for that, you know, that down-tuned, sludgy type of rock and roll, where to right. me it was what he's been releasing over the last few years, where now these are sing-along songs that also have some energy to them. Yeah. These, 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 are, these are songs that, that plant 
a worm in your ear and you're like, I got to hear it again. That, you know, when, when I did my review on, on the metal voice to me, and it's, it might be a very simplistic way of reviewing an album, but if I feel that urge, this is how I described it. If I feel that urge after listening to an album, like, Oh God, I can't wait to hit play again. Or I can't do it right now, but I can't wait until tomorrow morning when I'm going to have time to sit in the office and hit play. That's the sign of a great album to me is when I've played it through once and I'm like, I got to do it again. And I got to do it again. And, and honest, and this is going to freak out everybody who listens because they think I detest Ace. I've listened to this album every day, every day, and not just one track or two tracks but hit the first track and listen all the way through to the end now as i said in my review there might be songs where i'm like less excited about but this whole album has got that that pop melodic that earworm hook that every song puts in you and you're like yeah it it it, it's grabbed me and that has been missing for the last i don't know couple decades off of aces albums there's nothing that's just like yeah i gotta come back and listen to it no i'm sorry i mean somebody asked me of his recent albums i'm like you know his recent albums prior to this pretty much listened one and done i mean there was no nothing on any of these albums that pulled me back in in the past that's why I love the Fraley's Comet album. It had a lot of melodic hooks to it. Mm -hmm. The 78 album. Still, I mean, it's a different beast. And you can never, you can ne it's like Kiss saying, oh, we're going to do a, a Destroyer album. No, you can never do a Destroyer album. And Ace will never do a 78 album. It's, that's, a, that's a peak that you will never be able to achieve again. But they all, those albums had some form form of hooks, melodic hooks that sure. got you singing, that that grabbed you and didn't let go. And I felt like as the eighties progressed and into the two thousands, and he lost that. Something got lost in that it ability to, to write. Stuff. Yep. Yeah. Because stuff. words are not enough to me is is quintessential Ace Frehley. Yeah. I think that's Love one it. of yep. his greatest songs ever. So the more you give me like that, the better. And I like the heavy edge, like you said, Joey. I like the mix. And you're right. He's at his best with everything. But it was so it felt so one sided for a very long time. So this is I great. Felt, I but, felt this but, album was fun. I think that's what sometimes it lacked. It lacked fun. fun yeah. Right. So like Cherry Medicine, that's like a summertime song. Oh, like so to fun. blast with the windows down, you know, and, and I think that that's what was lacking before those, like you said, that, that, that pop, that little bit of a pop where the, the hooks are catchy and it'll stick in your head. I think that's what was lacking for a while. And this album but, really portrays that fun ace vibe. You know, you know Tom, Tommy, you talked about how fighting for life is, is, is a heavier song. And it is. I mean, that's one of the things that I love about it. Cause I think ace hasn't done a song like that. Yeah. But at the same time, being what you might call the heaviest song on the album, it's still got hooks to it. Yeah. It still grabs you. So, yeah, you know, and, and, and I've said this, I'm like, you know, Steve, the production, the best production I've heard on an Ace album in decades, easily decades, the, the, the quality of the recording, the, the sound of Ace's guitars, everything was just crisp crystal clear fresh yeah it was it wasn't like buried it wasn't like walking through mud it wasn't I, I don't i don't know it was just you know and some fan some fans might go well that's a terrible way to describe it but boy it had the excitement of an 80s album to it well you know yeah, what? I mean, because being a fan you're able to kind of step back and and look and, and produce the album as and from a fan's point of view, you know, and I think that that's really what what made this production so awesome is you looked at it not just as a a talented musician and producer, but as a fan. And I think that's also a very important piece of it, too. You know, and I, I say this all the time. I did this for all of us. You know what I mean? Because all I want and and look, 
We all know the mud slinging that goes on between those guys. All I wanted was Ace to be able to have something for his legacy, that this could be his shining moment, you know, and 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 that's really it. But at the end of the day, you know, like I said, whatever I do and whatever I get involved with, you know, I want it to be the best that it can possibly be. And uh, and that's what we did. And, and you know, at the end of the day, also, you know, there were, you know, and Michael, I saw some of your uh, the metal voice thing about certain things. There are certain battles as a producer and a co-writer. There are certain fights I just couldn't win. Um, there are definitely I stand behind every song on this record, but Ace, it's his name on the record. So there are certain lyrical battles that I can't win. And that's what you do as a producer. You have to, it's a give and take of what the artist wants and where, because believe me, man, I, I'm not, I'm not intimidated. I've been around famous rock stars for most of my life. I'm not intimidated by anybody. And there were certainly moments when Ace and I would get into it. And I would say, no fucking way can we do this. You can't say that. You can't have that line. You're not going to sing that. And he'd go, I want to do that. Or, you know, but at the end of the day, we would both cool off and then we would go. But it's all for the greater good of the record. So, you know. Those are some well, of the challenges that I had to deal with. And the other big challenge was that he was also still, while we were making the record, he was still working with other people, which have been, you know, um, some of his other friends that he was working with. And I got to say, man, it was a tough thing because those songs were not in the same planet as what we have now. And that was a tough battle because you got to sit there and tell Ace that, dude, your childhood friend, whoever you co-wrote this song with, this idea is not good, man. This is not, this is not going to stand up next to 10,000 volts or cherry medicine. So, so, and, 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 you know, I think when you're alluding to the picking the battles, it was, you know, and I've, I've said this many times in past reviews and fans have said it. It's like we've had enough of space songs. We've had enough of electricity songs. Let me ask you at least what your take is on on that, Steve. Was Ace set pushing for those because that's just what he loves? Or was he pushing it because that's what he thinks the fans wanted from him? Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I think it's a little bit of both, honestly. But look. This is what Ace is known for. Yeah, what are Kiss if songs? You do and you're 90, if you don't. Right. 98% of Kiss songs are about sex and love. <laughs> you know? I mean, what else do you write about? This is rock and roll, dude. What do what is a guy like Ace Frehley supposed to write about? You know? I mean, I, I don't get what did Van Halen? Van Halen, most of their famous songs were about having a good time and partying. They you know? Party band. Yeah, Mike, so, I think I think if you know it, it, it's one of those things where Ace, like I just said, is he's damned if he does and he damns if he doesn't. If if he if he had no songs that had anything to do with space or spaceman on this record, there'd be there'd be the the you know the Ace cult out there going crazy. How? Why did he get away from his roots? Why? Oh, did sure. He sing, you're he damned if you do, space? and you're damned if you don't. And then if he does it. It's the same thing, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum goes, well, why can't he sing about other stuff? But if you listen to the record, it really is. Yes, of course, are there a couple, a couple songs about space or or just, you know, uh, ca catch phrases about space. But it's about girls and about having fun and walking on the moon and, and, and 10,000 volts. It's not about electricity, right? It's not like shock me, but it's about. You know, you hit me like 10,000 volts. It's about what a, a girl makes him feel like, right? So, yeah. you know, it's it's play on word stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 as much as I've said, yeah, two not another space song, not another electricity song. The songs themselves are still so good and so well done that I in, I still enjoy listening to them even though I'm saying, Jesus Christ, walking on the moon. Do I have to hear another space song? But you know what? I'll hit the play because the song was well right. done. And that was yeah. my initial re reaction too, is it's kind of like, I get it, you know, but at some point just make a song. It doesn't have to have a space reference in it or, or 
Just be a Spraley. But That's Tommy, why you'll, we, you'll, you'll hear the same stuff. Like people will be like, well, why constantly cute? That's ridiculous. What is That's a dumb title. So, you know, like I said, he's he's damned if he does yeah. and he damned if he oh, doesn't. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's like, you know, there, there there's clearly plenty of albums that I'm assuming are written about or towards Laura. You know, it's yeah. it's their 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 love, their songs about love and you're the best thing in my life. And and to you guys points. Well, that's what freaking most bands start writing about to begin with. You write Which about I'm, your girlfriend. You write about the lost girlfriend. You write about love. You write about sex. So, you know, yeah, I'm already hearing people. It's like, oh, my God, is that another song about his girlfriend? Well, so what? So if it's a right. good song, it's a good song. It doesn't he's matter. Got, he's got, he's got just, a girl in his life that's very important to him. So he's writing about it singing about and, it and and just so you know and I, I don't know if you heard but you know lara she's the one who came up with that title constantly cute you know and ace was all about it man he called me up and you know what's funny about that song ori originally when i wrote came up with the idea he came up with the title and i was like oh cool i got a great idea constantly cute was originally double time joey i think i, oh, I that, think you right. remember because I think you played on it. So yep. it was like, I wanted it to be like ballroom blitz or I want you to want me. Because again, I'm also looking at, I listen to Ace's catalog and I go, what kind of song hasn't he had or a feel or a tempo? And we did it and he just couldn't get past that. So he immediately was like, now nah, we got to make it. He, he, his, his line was, it sounded too country. But again, he switched it around and we worked on it. And another funny story about Constantly Cute was, you remember I told you, think about the drum machine story. Well, when we changed Constantly Cute to halftime, I proceeded, and this was the same day that Ace and I went to see the Spinning Gold movie. We went to, uh, we went to the movies together to see the Casablanca movie. We went back to work at his house and he, what does he do? He pulls out a drum machine to show me what kind of groove he wants. And I swear to God, I have a little bit of video of it, but I'm probably never going to post it. But it's of Ace sitting there playing a drum machine, going, trying to go, you know, boom, ba -ta, boom, boom, ba, like that groove. And he kept, he was obsessed about it. And I remember Joey, right? When he came over, when you were cutting the drums on it, he was very adamant about what, how you play that groove. Yeah, because the, the demo that Steve originally gave me to to track, like you said, it was more of that double time pop, you know, pop feel. Um, and I think you and I even liked that one better, I remember correctly, right? And you were like, no, dude, <laughs> Ace doesn't like it. He wants to do it this way. And I'm like, oh, come on. It's so poppy and fun this way. And then, you know, you were like, no, Ace, Ace wants something like this. And then I laid it down and he came over later that night and he was like, yeah, oh my God, that's exactly what I was thinking. So yeah. I guess we hit it on the head. Yeah. Good. Well, so now Steve, that you're, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so Steve, you talked about how, you know, you were, you were bringing him songs and stuff like that. How much, how many songs did Ace bring into this production? Did he bring any fully written finished songs or was he mainly bringing in you know like inspiration like constantly cute or was he bringing in a riff and that you were building everything else around it yeah i mean primarily besides back into your arms again which you know we finally got recorded from the 87 demo and um you know that was one when we were working on i believe we were working on cherry medicine here in my studio and we you know when we're writing lyrics we go on youtube and we're trying to you know i was going on looking for some rhyming words i didn't have a rhyming dictionary with me and i see on youtube i see that little back into my arms with him in the unmasked era and i go is this a leftover song from unmasked and he goes no it's a demo from you know from from the 80s i did with this guy arthur stead and that's how that came into play. And then Life of a Stranger was the cover tune, but everything else on the record were 95% ideas that I brought to him. You know, again, he was still working with other artists and I, I mean, with other writers and his friends and coming up with other things, but I was on a mission to make the best record and it just got to the point where when we the fifth song we finished 
was Cherry Medicine. And when we got that one, and Ace has been very vocal about it, when he played it for Lara's daughter and her friends who were in their early 20s, they all went nuts. Because Cherry Medicine could easily be you know, any active rock band, you know, pop, you know, rock band, it could be, you know, it could be, I I dare I say, you know, maybe a Green Day or a Weezer, you know, it's got an alternative thing. You know, a lot of people are saying Oasis, you know, I mean, come on, Noel Gallagher is influenced by Steve Brown. Let's never forget that. (laughs) Well, yeah, but, But, you know, since you have that, though, then my question, my follow up question is, is that we're all KISS fans. We're sitting here talking about this, and the people who are going to be listening for the most part are also KISS fans. There are yeah. some KISS fans who disenfranchise themselves from Ace for maybe not interested in the, the stuff he's put out in the past, but they'll come back because they're always going to give him a chance. They're always going to listen, so he's going to gain yeah. people back. How do you reach now some of these like Lara's daughter and how do you reach some other younger rock fans that would love that listen to I don't know, in this moment, or they listen to Parkway Drive or whoever to go, yeah, this is really good. How do you, because it's it's too good to not have other people hear it, but how do you do it today? Well, I mean, that's a great question. And, you know, as we've all seen, you see that there's a new Ace Fraley out there, the social media Ace. He's on yes. TikTok. He's doing this. He has been reaching. And I just want to say, and I think you guys know this, This already, this record is Ace's most successful pre-launch that he's had in 20 years on any record that he's ever done. There is an extreme buzz around this record. There are young people who are, he's on TikTok, man. And, you know, look, man, I'm very tight with his social media guy and I'm getting the reports. It's mind blowing. People love him. You see, I don't need to tell you, Michael, you're a marketing guy. You guys know, you know, there's no secret that, you know, there's something happening with this. So, um, but yeah, we have a great, you know, first and foremost, he's on a great record company, Monarch Heavy. They are putting major label dollars into this record in 2024, which is a rarity. You know, we have radio campaign, three videos, you know, I mean, there's, and there's real money being spent and marketing and doing this. But, you know, look, this wouldn't be happening if we didn't make this record. And I've said this and I learned this from Ed and Al Van Halen 30 years ago. And Eddie was always he was a dear friend of mine. And, you know, I still talk to Alex all the time. But long story short, those guys always said to me and they you know, you, you've seen this in the press music overpowers bullshit. All the hype in the world doesn't matter. Like I told Ace, none of this, none of this matters without the music that's there. Great album cover, great video, great picture. It means nothing if the songs aren't great and the production isn't great. Let's give a shout out to Bruno Ravel from Danger Danger and The Defiance who mixed and mastered the record. He's one of my team. You know, he mixed the Tokyo Motor Fist record and he's he's one of the best there is in the business, you know. So I'm hoping this gets him to that next level, but that's what it's all about, you know. And again, what you said before, the Kiss fans who have been so down on him, this record is going to be the record that I don't care anybody. If you're even a mediocre like Kiss fan, when you listen to this record, unless you have hearing problems, you have to like this record. I don't care. You know, and I've said this numerous times and I'll say it on the show and I know I'm going to catch shit for it. This record is the best. It's related release since Revenge in 1992. It is the most consistent 11 songs. You go through every song, track for track. It's the most consistent thing that any KISS member or KISS band has done since Revenge. And that, that's a great, and that's a great way to put it, too. Because, I listen, I know, we, guys, we're all KISS fans. We've heard the same interview from Gene and Paul a thousand times. Our, this album is better than Destroyer. How many times have we heard that, right? And same yeah. thing with this Ace record. You know, to compare it to 78 is such a travesty. It's so hard to compare anything to 78, just mainly because of our age and all of the Kiss fans' age when that record came out. It's so hard to compare because you're in a different mindset. But what Steve just said, I think, hits it right on the, on the nose where 
it's the best kiss related and i agree with that stevie it's the best kiss related re record that's been released since revenge and if you look think about the catalog that that we're talking about there i i don't even think it's close i really don't but speak speaking of constantly cute himself mark has been uh Weirdly silent here, Mark. I want to hear uh, <laughs> from uh, Constantly Cute himself. Give me some feedback. I want to hear something. Constantly Cute. I'm, I'm taking all of this in. I'm I'm uh, I'm a sponge. Um, to and plus this. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> He's been waiting Mark's an hour froze. to talk. <laughs> Mark's froze. He was just going to give us the big review, and now he's what? <laughs> Um. All right. So while while we wait for Mark to unfreeze, <laughs> now, Steve, I, I'm that's I'm gonna ha I gotta ask this because I want to get your response to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, because as more of the songs have started to leak over the past day or two here, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm not saying I agree with this, but I want you to address it. There's people mm -hmm. coming online now who are like, uh, Ace doesn't play guitar on this album. Uh, that doesn't sound like Ace's guitars. Uh, his vocals, big time auto tune. There's a lot of processing done on that. Do you do you want to address those? I don't, I don't want to call them issues because it's just Kiss fans being Kiss fans who want yeah. to complain about everything that happens. But I mean, you're the guy who worked on this. Tell us. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's no secret that, of course, I played on a lot of the stuff. I played a lot of the rhythm guitars. I played a lot of the bass. I did all the background vocals, um, you know, along with Ace. Um, you know, regarding everything else, it's a modern production. Um, I don't personally use Auto-Tune, but I have other tools that I can use to... You know, let's say if there is a note, you know, and I will say this, no matter what, I don't give a fuck. Any record that you've heard in the last 20 years is going to have some sort of vocal processing, whether it's pitch, pitch yep. correction. Listen to the new Rolling Stones record. Listen to any modern rock pop record you've heard. It's all there. Whether I don't use auto tune, so I'm, I don't need to go any further in that. Are there are there notes where I had to maybe pitch something up? Of course there are. Just like any other record you've heard in the last 25 years. That's just the way it is. The world has become accustomed to pitch perfect, tuned perfect, timed perfect. You know, and I tried, I was very aware of that. We have to maintain that this still has to be a raw rock record and be believable, but it also has to be palatable and it has to have that ear candy where it's listenable, that it's going to get played on the radio and it's going to get pl a million plus plays and views on YouTube. It has to be, I make fucking hit records, man, but at that the actually end sounds of the like day. nitpicking, though, to me, when people come of on and say it shit is. like oh, that. It, it, it's Either the songs are good you. or they're not. I don't give a shit. Well, that's so that's wait, look, good. look, look. Anybody that's seen Kiss in the last four years live, Paul Stanley's singing to a track. He's talking over a track. He's lip syncing. So don't give me any bullshit about whether I use this processing. I use everything. I'm a master producer engineer and my goal and my job, what I get paid and I get paid well to do this is to whatever comes out of my studio is going to compete with something like Mutt Lang would do. And I, that's what I model myself after. I'm a one-stop shop to where you come to me. I can sing, I can play, I can write. Produce, engineer, mix, master, do it all, you know? And like I tell people, making records is like making sausage. You take a lot of ingredients and you grind it and you never really want to see how it's made, but you love to eat it when it's done. If you like sausage, you know, I, I do. <laughs> well, no, I yeah. mean, Mark, 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 Mark likes sausage too, right, Tommy? That's what I've heard. <laughs> No, I mean, I I... Tom, Tommy Tommy made the point, and I've made that in my review. At the end of the day, it's a good song. That's what matters. If it's That's a right. good song, I don't care who wrote it. I don't care who played on it. I, I 
if it's a crappy song that I'll never listen to, but it's got the original band on it, who gives a crap? I'm never listening to it again because the song sucked. Yeah. But and 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 to all of that, I think it needs to be beaten over the heads of 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 especially KISS fans. All of this is a personal taste. Music is a hundred percent personal from person to person to person to person. For sure. So so what I love, listen, I absolutely love Crazy Nights. One of the best Kiss albums ever. Oh, yeah, the you, you, you got Mark who's like, let's wrap it up. No talking about that crappy album. <laughs> you know, and that's fine. I don't care. Yeah. But music is personal. And if somebody likes it, does it really bother you that somebody likes something you don't like? Because my my loving this new ace album has no bearing on the next person who goes oh it's overly produced it's like that's what you think great that's your choice but i'm telling you i love it well that means you know again that means a lot and that's been 99% of the feedback you know from around the world and it's been overwhelming there's a, there's a tremendous love for ace and look i love all those guys you know gene you know and gene has been a dear friend for a long long time always the greatest you know he's one of the most consistent people in the world much like ace is and peter paul we all know the stories of him and i've said this and i say it with love he's an interesting bunch of people you know, because Paul is one of those guys that any given day and I've toured with Paul, you know, uh, twice in my life on the Revenge Tour and also in 2014 on the Kiss and Def Leppard Tour. I was out on the road with them for three weeks when I was preparing to do my first couple shows. So and this has been something that numerous people have said regarding the way Paul is. He's one of those guys where one day he can be like your best friend and the next day he acts like he doesn't know you. And I've had that happen to me numerous times. And Joey, we know numerous, very well-known people, even people who are way more famous than Paul that think they're friends with him were like, dude, wow, this guy totally dissed me. And I go, yeah, that's just the way he is. And that's that's what it is. So, um, you know, again, I don't know why I just wandered off in that land. But uh, that, that, that that's what we love. The conversations just take a life of their own. Let me I, ask let me ask you about life of a stranger. Mm hmm. Why? Why a cover song? I, I felt like there was in the past. It felt like Ace has had to do cover songs because, frankly, they might have been the best song on the album. In this case, it isn't. I mean, Life of a Stranger is not the best. It's not bad, but it's not. There's plenty of better songs. Did Ace insist on having to do this? Did it mean something personal to him? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's one, you know, one of the things he told me, every one of his records has to have an instrumental and it has to have a cover song. That's just his thing. You know, and I think because of the 78, because of New York Groove being his biggest hit that he is, um, I think he's handicapped by that because I'm not too, I wasn't too happy about it. I mean, I don't get any publishing money off of Life of a Stranger, but I will say it's better than the E because he came to me with two cover songs. One was an 80s cover song that my 80s band Rubik's Cube does. And I was like, no fucking way are we doing that song. The world does not need that. No, Come on, way. you got to tell us what song it was. It was uh, Your Love by The Outfield. Wow. wow. I didn't know that either. Yeah, but, I, you know, I think, you know, luckily for Ace, you know, when he does do a cover song on these types of records, not the origin records, you know, it's it's a type of cover song like a New York Groove, like an Into the Night that other people have written that no one knows the original. No one knows yeah. Life of a Stranger. No one knows that original version. Yeah. So, you know, the average person who's listening to this record or that song, that's an ace song. So they, they can't, you know, something like Your Love by the Outfield, most people will know that within three bars. So, you know, when Ace picks a, a cover tune, I think it's at least cool that he does something so off the beaten path where he kind of makes it his own. Yeah, yeah. I like agree. He could, he I agree. Could do like cheap trick. He's a whore. That'd be great. Something yeah. only nobody. Uh, yeah. But I will say, you know, in defense to it, when he did play it for me, I was like, yes, 
we can make this fantastic. And I said to him right away, and this is an interesting story about how our working relationship evolved, because that one came midway through and he was all about it. He was like, I love this. It was in the movie, The Transporter, which is one of his favorite movies. So he has a vested interest in it. But I was like, oh, dude, we're going to do a. I heard it immediately. We're going to do a big production. I, and I told him, I want this to be like your stairway to heaven. I want it to be strings and keyboards and great guitar, you know, a cool guitar line. I heard that arrangement that's on the record right from, you know, the moment we started working on it. And, um, you know, so it was it was unique in that sense. Um, so at least I was able to put a stamp on it production wise. And I think like Joey said, most people are never going to know where that song came from. And I think on the record, it is like that late in the album, dark, deep yep. cut. It sounds like a movie soundtrack song. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I think that's the first song that I worked on, too, on the on the record. I think that's the first song you sent me. And again, when Steve sent me that song. You know, being the Kiss fan that I am, I'm just honored that, you know, I'm thinking that it's a demo. I'm not even thinking that this is going to make the record. When Steve calls me, I, I'm i just floored that, oh, my God, I'm, I'm possibly even doing demos for the new <laughs> Ace record. You know, I don't, you know, that's who I am. That's the type of guy I am. I love that I was just involved, you know, doing stuff with Steve, of course, and just helping Ace get through the record a little bit with demos. And then later on, when Steve was more like, no, dude, that track is killer. We're using it. Now I'm like, holy, now my, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my, my saliva is pouring out of my mouth like a, like a rabid dog. Now I want more and more and more. So when Steve kept calling me back for new tracks and I realized that there was a chance that these were just going to be real tracks and not demos, you know, I was jumping at the chance. It was, it was an honor. Yeah. Steve, how many um, other tracks were worked on that? didn't make the album oh that's a great question i probably have another five solid ideas um that that didn't even get past you know didn't even uh i didn't even get past we didn't even work on them at all you know which is you know it's funny because i'm trying to think while i'm talking to you and um yeah, there's some great ideas. So, you know, should we in a couple of years, I, I'm going to get I'm going to guess that we're probably going to do another full length uh, original record at some point, you know, but, you know, and and at the end of the day, look, Ace is going to be 73 in a couple of weeks, you know, at the end of uh, April. Um, he, like I told him, I said, hey, man, if this is the last all original, you know, full length album you ever make, it's a pretty damn good bookend to your career. And that's the other thing which I, I told him and I've said this numerous times with various interviews. To me, this is a career defining record for Ace in a sense that it has parts. If you listen to every song on the record, there is something for everybody and every aspect of his career, you know, like his 50 year career. And that was very also important to me that we make this because you never know what's going to happen. So, you know, and I do that with my own records. When I finish something, I go, if I go to heaven tomorrow, hopefully I'm going to heaven. If I go to heaven tomorrow, no way. this last record, this last record I made is it going to be is it going to be good for my legacy or great for my legacy and thankfully i can say that it, the last things that i've done yeah and especially the ace record so for ace that was very important to me and i and i honestly believe again that the, you know like i've said this is a career defining record for him that it very well could be it might be the last full length record that he does and if he does it's a damn damn good way to go out are there well, any fully finished songs that didn't make the album no. No, nope. I wish I could say there were there was talk of, you know, the the bonus track for Japan or, you know, overseas. And but uh, no, we didn't need to. And again, you know, it was like, you know, it's not easy making a record, you know, when you're you know when you're 71 years old and, you know, 50. I started this record when I was 51 years old. And, you know, besides, you know, having a family and playing in five different bands and touring all around the world, it was, you know, it was a lot of work. I mean, I really over the last year put so much time into making this record, you know, that it, it, it's really um, 
you know, and of course I love every minute of it because I'm a studio guy as much as I love touring, but it's not like the old days, you know, as we were talking about where it was like, you know, 1989 trickster making the first record, we flew out to LA and lived for four months making that record. And, you know, it's not like that nowadays. And everybody's, you know, Ace is a weekend warrior with the shows. And that's what I do as well with Trickster or Rubik's Cube or, you know, whatever, Eric Martin, whatever band I'm playing. And it, you know, it creates time, you know. But I, what I was saying before, whenever we worked, we pretty much got a song done or at least some vocals. We always accomplished something, which was very important. Well, and I wanted to, maybe no one's asked you this, but I know there's going to be people who are wondering this. So Ace was on E1, and I know that E1 was sold or I'd heard it was sold or broken up into sections. So mm -hmm. how did he end up where he is now? Or is that a subsidiary of, subsidiary of where E1 went? Yeah, that from what I know, that is the case. Again, I wasn't there for it, but I believe Scott Givens, who's the president of Monarch Heavy, and Steve Seabury, who's the product manager, they were all part of E1. And then when it got, you know, when it got, uh, I believe Hasbro bought it, the toy company, they bought it, and that's how it turned. But all I can say is working with the Aces team at Monarch. They have just been unbelievable. I have not seen this kind of label enthusiasm and work ethic since, you know, since the 90s when I was on, you know, MCA Universal, you know, to be on a major label. This feels like working with a major label again. And in 2024, let me tell you, that's a rarity. But yeah, Steve, yeah. I think I think it's because, like you said, it's it's nothing without the the product. If you would have if if you guys would have delivered a record that was you know kind of mediocre, you would not see the push that's happening right now. I think they're so in love with the product that they received that every song that you guys kept sending them, they were like, "Oh my God, we're going to do more and more and more and more." That's why they're dumping all this money. And like you yeah. said, when was the last time three videos were released before the record was a record even came out? Right. Well, I know and, and, and in store to sign records. That's, I think, get to the people. That's a smart idea. Yeah. And Ace has been working his ass off. You know, he's been doing a ton of interviews and, you know, it, it's just really good. I got him, you know, I've taken an active role in helping him his, with his career. I got him a new booking agent and we're doing, he's working with Sullivan Big at Big Time Entertainment now. And he's, you know, his guarantees are going up and it's finally, he's getting his due in a sense of where he needs to be. And, you know, and again, like I said, man, I just love the guy. And I, I want to see him succeed and, and do the best. And, you know, I'm really I'm working with him, getting him, you know, ready for his live performances. And I wish, he'd, you know, again, I wish he'd practice more. But he's you know, he's doing he's doing more than he has in the last couple of years. And I can honestly say that, you know, and again, it's it's you know, let's all remember, kids, he's not 54. He's he's going to be 73. So you got to cut him some slack. And he ain't lip syncing. He's got a phenomenal band. And um, you're definitely going to see a lot of these new songs played live. Well, I was, I was going to say, since you've got his ear, tell him we want less Kiss tunes in yeah. an Ace Fraley solo set. And we want more Ace, Ace Fraley, Fraley solo songs. tunes. Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't go to Ace, I don't go to see Ace Fraley to see Kiss. No. Yeah. I go to see do, Ace Fraley. Yeah, and if he's going to do Kiss songs when he was in Kiss, I want it to be his songs. I'm tired of Deuce and Love Gun. I hear that elsewhere. Play well, I, you know, a, again, that is a tough thing because I here's know. the reality. If I you know. want to play casinos, fairs, and festivals. They want Kiss songs. 98% of those people don't know. They don't even know what Rip It Out is. They knew. They know New York Groove, Detroit Rock City, and Shout It Out Loud. And you know what else? You know what the biggest streaming Kiss song is? You guys know this. I was, I was, made, I was, for I was made for loving you. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's business. And look, I get it from all. And I was very much a part of helping him with the new set list. And it and it was a conscious effort between the booking agent and you want to play casinos. Those casino buyers who are going to pay you big money, they don't want to hear deep cuts from Trouble Walking. I can tell you that. Right. But even no. if they play, he played Trouble Walking instead of Emerald, I'd rather hear that. Oh, well, yeah. I, well, Emerald's not in the set anymore. Thank God. You know? Thank God. 
It's, it's, you know, it, it's got to become, he's got to do the greatest hits. I got him rock and roll all night, shout it out loud back in the set, change it, open up with shock me, you know, trying to get different things. But look, there are conscious business decisions. And as much as all of us fans want to hear this, when ACDC goes out, they, there are, and this is something I learned from Def Leppard, Rick Savage, who, you know, Sav, bass player, he writes the set list for Def Leppard. He told me, Steve, there are eight songs that we have to do and there are no questions. And that's the way it is for all the big bands. And no matter what you want to say, you know, Ace was one of the creators of Kiss. Though he didn't write Rock and Roll All Night, he wrote that guitar solo, that iconic guitar solo. So he has ownership to that song. And that song deserves to be played. And especially now, he's filling a void because Kits ain't there. Fair point. Awesome. Mark, do you want to get, try your review again? Do you want to say something? Or are you done? No, no. I, I you know, the freeze and everything. We'll do it at a later date. So. <laughs> yeah, I love well, it. We, we, we can do little... our review next week. Give that us way Mark's recap. notes won't go to waste. What do you think of the record as a whole, Mark? Give me a little uh, feeling. He froze again. It's unbelievable. He finally says something and he freezes. Steve, I will say, I will say that your passion is so infectious and that your passion on this project and it, not just the album, but everything behind it is so infectious that there's there's not a human alive that wouldn't be excited about it. Just because I, just your passion in this, just I had to drop off. I didn't drop off, but I was driving. But just listening to you and watching you, that your the passion is just extraordinary. If you, you know, were well, rolling, she'd want to date you. Look, look, let's not forget, you know, I, I, you know, and I do have to go back to that eight year old kid, you know, from Paramus, New Jersey going, holy shit, dude, you're, you just produced Ace Fraley's new solo record. You know, again, it, my life has been a fairy tale and it never gets lost on me. And I said this before, since I was 16 years old, I've been around the biggest rock stars in the world, whether it be the Bon Jovi guys, Def Leppard, Metallica. Van Halen, Kiss, any one of them, the Scorpions. And I've never been intimidated because I always feel like, hey, man, we're musicians. We're all equal. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm as good as anybody that's out there playing stadiums. I've been I shared the stage with Def Leppard and Journey and played with, you know, played with all these bands. But this was something to where, you know, I, I felt again there was there was a duty as a lifelong KISS fan, I just wanted this again, and I can't stress enough. I wanted this for all of us because I'm tired and I'm really this goes with a, this goes to other legacy bands. We all know and we can name them all. They all kind of half ass their new records. There's maybe one or two good songs and then the rest is kind of throwaway. And I've said it to bands that I'm that I've maybe played with or friends like, man, this is there's some ideas that are really good, but it's kind of half baked. My goal and I would love to work with, let's say, a Bon Jovi or something to bring them to get John back to where he used to be you know, and get his voice back and be able to help certain bands make these great records. And I said this before, you know, there's a guy out there who's doing great work now, Andrew Watt, who's like the pro rock producer of the year. He's like the new Mutt Lang. He's kind of the guy that I'm gunning for. He did those last two Ozzy records. He did the new Rolling Stones. I mean, I don't know if you guys listen, listen to the new Rolling Stones record. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. It's amazing. And what's, but what's the X factor? him and that's what i did with ace it's his enthusiasm that's why he's producing pearl jam you listen to that new pearl jam song i'm not the biggest pearl jam fan but that new pearl jam song that is a good really kick-ass rock and roll song and it sounds like pearl jam in their heyday hint hint that's what these bands need to do you know, and again, that's really what I'm trying to do with my producing and co-writing career. I want to be the new Mutt Lang for the for the future. And really, as someone who still cares about making records, not just singles, because there is that mindset. Oh, it's all about one song. Ace and I said in the beginning, dude, we want vinyl. We want 11 
great songs. We want it like when we were kids listening to rock and roll over. There's not a shitty song on that record, you know, and getting to the kiss pop stuff. Unmasked is one of my favorite records, man. And Aces, Talk to Me, Two Sides of the Coin. I think those are two of Aces' best songs. Three sides of the coin, yeah. All right, so so here, nope. here's, here's, your, here's your challenge, Steve. On the next Ace Fraley album, you've got to get him to record a version called Three Sides of the Coin. Yeah, you never know, man. You never Actually, know. I'd like, well, to, I'd like him to do Catch Me When I Fall. That I, I, is, it, is that a demo? Called, yeah, people think it's called audio video. I know you that know, song, it's, Tommy. Great it's, song. It's funny. Yeah. So just so you know, we've already started getting ideas. We're going to be doing this new Origins record, but you know, don't don't jump on me yet. There's going to be a lot of duets on it. And I'm trying to, you know, with the label and with Ace, we're going to do some unique things with it. And um there has been some talk about doing because like back into my arms again, there are a bunch of great unreleased, unfinished ace songs that, you know, like I told him the other day, I said, dude, we got to catalog all these unreleased songs of yours and record them. You know, I mean, you know, again, every year is another year that, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So I want to be able to make sure that for all of us Kiss fans and ace fans that we have his whole all of his material properly documented and recorded properly. Well, and if you're going to do, if you're gonna do that, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You're talking. I was just going to say, if you're going to do some duets, it'd be nice to see, th see him do something outside of the box. And, and this is nothing against Lita Ford, but instead of going to the obvious choice of someone like her pick, um, I don't know, Susanna Hoffs from the bangles. You know, yeah, something that's, that that's you'd never expect. Believe me, we're with yeah. that. That's that's something, you know, and again and again, we're we're you know, we're we're doing that right now. It's all about 10,000 volts and getting we're that's not even matters. starting origins until probably the fall. So that's nothing to worry about. But I will tell all the fans that we've already talked about it. It's going to be unique. It's not going to be what you think it is. Steve, Joey, this has been awesome. This has Thanks, been. Guys. This is this is actually ideally what I wanted this to be was more of a dig into the process and the songs and the recording. And, you know, we'll do our review, but everybody does reviews. I mean, you know, review podcasts are a dime a dozen out there. We'll do it because I think this new album is good enough to do. And frankly, our haters can't wait to hear what we're going to say about a new Ace album. Yeah. Um but this was great. I mean, to, to, to Lisa's point, your passion for this, Steve, you know, you're the X factor in this Ace Fraley album. Why is this different than everything he's released over the last couple of decades? You, you're different. And your kiss I agree hundred percent. I agree. One hundred percent. You know what we want. Even though, oh. Steve, you didn't even say hello to me when you played in Atlanta a couple weeks ago, but we're just going to let that go. Sorry. I did, too. I saw you. No, Bye. you did not say hello. No, no, no. It's well, okay. We're I... just going to let that go. Wait, right. wait, okay. wait, wait. Okay, so this you're giving guess, Steve a hard Lisa. time because he didn't say hi to you, and Joey kicked you out of a convention. Whoa, whoa I don't remember anything about that, Tommy. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Lisa, oh, you troublemaker. Like, remember about that, Joey. You troublemaker. <laughs> you I was like... You're so right. Let, let me, can I just can I just press yep. preface this really quick too, and not to go off the A subject, but if you if, if Trickster comes to your town, please go see them. I was completely blown away. It was the energy on that stage really was cool. uh, the energy on the stage was phenomenal. I mean, it was it was outstanding. It was outstanding. Steve, Steve and the guy with the hat, right? Is that Stevie? Steve, <laughs> the guy with the hat. <laughs> <laughs> said, no, but Tom, you, you, you're, you're so right. Steve is the X factor. I mean, obviously, I owe everything to him for being part of this record. You know, it's such an honor for me to be not only involved with Ace, but to work with Steve, you know, on so many different projects. Steve's always calling me to do various things. And um, it's an honor. But st working with Steve, and I think Ace can tell you the same thing, it's it's a different level. It it brings it 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 elevates the people around him. So not only is Steve great, but he brings everyone else up around him. And that's what we got with Ace. You know, Ace is great. Ace has always been great. But like Steve said in the past, maybe he just 
didn't put 100% in full time, right? So, but Steve is not going to take no for an answer. He's not going to take uh, 80% tonight, 60% tonight. He wants 110% or 10,000%, no pun intended there. But uh, he's not going to take it. And he's going to make everything sound to the best of his ability and bring the best out of you. There you go. Thank you, Joey. Joey, Joey, did you ever think when I, like, I think we've known each other for how long? Like 20 some years now? Oh, at least, yeah. Did you ever think that 20 years ago that you were were going to ever play on an, on an Ace Frehley album? I mean, Again, I mean that got, seriously. Listen, did you, you ever, did you ever like think that in the back of your head? I mean, this got, this has to be a pretty cool opportunity, right? You know my story, Lisa. We met when I was in my Kiss tribute band, Kiss Nation. So, you mm -hmm. know, um, yep. you know, we're all the biggest Kiss fans in the world, right? You know, listening to Kiss as a kid, five years old, going to Madison Square Garden. I saw the Dynasty tour. I was a little chubby kid looking for a hot dog. I had no idea what I was even there for. I walked out a different person and my life changed. You know, I've been on that path ever since. And, yeah. you know, just like Stevie, th there's been nothing that's ever going to stand in my way to achieve that next goal of mine. And was my goal ever to be on the new Ace record? God, my goal was always to be in Kiss one day, right? And I got pretty damn close. Toured with Kiss, toured the country with Chris, Kiss on the new Ace Freely record. Just did a couple of shows with Bruce Kulick. So, you know, dreams can come true. Just keep going. Don't let morons stand in front of you and say, what are you doing? You can't do that. You're 50 years old. What are you doing still playing rock and roll? And Shut you know up. what, Joey? I love seeing good things happen to great people. We yep. There you go. That's yep. what it's, that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And, you know, I, I think that was the key of all of this. And he keeps saying about the enthusiasm and that was really it. And that's all I ever try to do because at the end of the day, guys, this is what I love. It's in my blood. You know, I, I don't do this just because, you know, the, the money is nothing. I mean, I put in a hundred more hours than I get paid for. You know what I mean? I do this because I love it. It's like breathing for me and the same for Joey. But this has all been part of our, you know, our master plan. People ask me all the time that same thing like that. You know, did you ever think? And I go, of course I did. This is what I did since I, I started Trickster when I was 12 years old. This is what I did. I told everybody I'm going to play the Meadowlands. I'm going to be friends with Eddie Van Halen. I'm going to tour with Kiss. I'm going to produce Ace Frehley. I'm going to be in Def Leppard. You know, yeah, there's a part of me that goes, holy shit, it really happened? What? But this is hard-ass work. You know, you put in, I put in 10,000 hours by the time I was 18. You know what I mean? And this, yeah. is, this, is no, this is no accident. And at the end of the day, the work is the, is the proof in that. And uh, Steve, you need, you, know, to be a you need to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and I think what you brought up a really good point too, because I've always believed this, and many people have said this. It's that ten thousand hour rule. If you spend ten thousand hours developing whatever it is that you do, you're going to be pretty damn good at it if you don't give up. That's for sure, and and you know that it's in your blood. I mean, luckily for me, look, there are certain people where in the, the career paths they choose, you can look at them, and sadly, you say it's never going to happen. Luckily for me, the good Lord blessed me with all the tools to be a rock star, a rock producer, do all the things that I've done in this career, and. Um, you know, and the other thing, I'm blessed. I'm five years sober. So Ace and I, you know, we right. bonded with that, that we're, you know, that I'm, that I'm a sober guy. I lived a hard rock and roll life for a long time, survived it. And I believe, and I've said this to Joey and I say it to PJ all the time. I said, dude, the first 50 years were just a warm up for the next 50 years because we, I believe and Joey, I believe you believe the same thing that the best is yet to come for all of us. That's a great answer. Steve, Steve, one before before we say goodbye, one real quick question. Yeah. Is there going to be another Tokyo Motor Fist album? That I can't give you an honest answer on. I doubt it because first and foremost, which a lot of people and the fans don't understand, I don't own that brand and I don't own that Frontiers Records owns the name. And that was one of their brainchild of putting Ted so and one I of their assemb us an assembled band yes. by Frontiers. Got so it. it's not like I'm going to go and honestly, look, 
and not to harp on the money for the amount of time that I put in making those records and doing it. it it's it, it's the returns are not not enough for me. You know, we made two fa- phenomenal records. I just listened to both of them the other day and I was I went, wow, man, you know, not like I impressed myself that much. But I was like, man, these are fucking great songs. Even if I didn't write this, I would love this band. You know, and there are a lot of it, like Bruno's band, The Defiance. I don't know if you ever heard that. Oh, you know, with well, Paul their, their, their albums are amazing. Yeah. So but again, it's not where I'm at. I'm really looking at branching out. You know, again, I have a lot of projects going on with Ace, you know, other stuff that we're working on. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going out on tour with Trickster this year. You know, I probably have 50, 60 shows booked with trickster and various different things so my plate is really really full so i don't really know and what i was saying is i'm really getting into building my producing and writing i've been going to nashville a lot i've been writing a lot with this great artist this country rock guy Corey marks who's on better noise uh, motley's label and um doing some incredible work with him another songwriter famous country guy jt harding down in nashville and really trying to not even so much country but it's just country writers but really break in and like i said become the next you know hopefully you know get to you know do my mutt lang thing if you will and uh, work with some younger bands that are going to, you know, have a shot at breaking in and, and making great records for the future of rock. That'd be well, awesome. Can't wait to see. And, and see Steve, what you, you also have, you also have a um, guitar line out, correct? I do. Yeah. I, I just launched uh, over the summer FBS guitars, which are right. Here's one of the models, my VS 200 that I played uh, down at uh, Kiss Cancer Goodbye with Ace. And uh, yeah, it's been an incredible journey over the last couple of years. You know, again, I say it all the time. I'm one of the most blessed musicians in the world. And I have great people who work with me. And I have this guitar line now that, you know, I never would have thought would have come into my lap. But again, um, you know, great things happen uh, when you sometimes when you least expect it. And I had somebody who believed in my vision for these guitars and uh, they've been just, you know, we, we have these incredible guitars at a stellar price. They're three hundred seventy nine dollars, three hundred fifty nine and two hundred and fifty nine dollars. Perfect. Start. And they're like they're phenomenal guitars. And I've been playing them live out on the road. And, you know, we're really starting to blow up with it. So, again, it's another dream come true. My husband is interested, but I'll reach out to you separately. Yeah, well, and, and, yeah there you go. Well, and Joey, too. I mean, anything you got to say about ZO2 or the book? Where where are we at here? Oh yeah, we yeah, can't just, forget about Joey. We can't forget about who always, about always, who? <laughs> always staying busy, as you know, like you said, Tommy Zio 2 is back. Um, obviously, you know, we lost our, our bandmate David Z a couple years ago, and uh we just reformed, released our new record um on Kibble Records. It's Begin Again. Check it out. Our next single is coming out uh March 5th. Uh it'll be on Spotify streaming as as of March 5th as well. Um, just always, always busy. Same with Steve. So much on my plate, always looking for the next big thing, writing books, doing TV, recording albums on the road. There's so much to do. Uh, not enough time to do it. (laughs) Guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been a, a, a great conversation. And, uh, you know, by the time everybody's listening or watching this, you better have uh, gotten your copy of uh, Ace's new album, Ten Thousand. Yeah, That's Bye. it. I'll be I'll be at the record store first thing tomorrow morning, man. It's in my one of my things that I always do. I go to my record shop, Sound Exchange in Wayne, New Jersey, and buy a copy of the record. So yeah. it's uh it's going to be a big week. We're really looking forward to it. And God, it's been an honor to be on the show. I've been a fan for a long time, and uh, you know, as they said in Spinal Tap, thanks for letting me in. Well, you're you. very welcome. You guys are always both welcome to come back whenever you want, and we'll see you out on the road. I'm sure this summer. Um, that was that was such a fun conversation. I love that. You know, Lisa, you nailed it. The passion that Steve has for this album and for Ace. Wow, it's you need someone like it's that. It's very cool. yeah. You know, he, really. He's that X factor. He's the big thing that's different in this Ace album. Um, from anything in the past, in my opinion. I know I know it's loud, but I will say that 
I think if you looked at the producers of Ace's other albums, I think that Steve was the one that was able to give him that push and a push in a good way, you know, to give him that motivation. Yep. I agree. That's all. I know it's really yep. loud in here. I apologize. We can't know. It's okay. And, and Mark, don't throw away your notes. We will do a full review. Maybe we do it next week or like Steve offered, he could come back on and, and answer our questions as we review it, which could be an interesting way to do a review as well. Um, I think it'd be more interesting than just doing the review. It could be. I mean, again, I mean, he, he, he paints like as he, he, he was telling me after we hung up, he was telling me about blinded, yeah. you know, what, what it's about. I didn't know that. It, and right. it's, and it starts making sense How did when, you when you start that getting that sort of stuff. Uh, well, I knew it was about technology, but I didn't know it was about artificial intelligence. I thought I it was it's just another everything. What? That's that's yeah. You know, what? let's wrap. I'm I'm done with this. I'm, let's just wrap it up. This is so so so. Crazy. Anyway, everybody, go out. You're watching this. Go out and get your uh. Go get your Ace Frehley album, and uh, that's it. Three sides of the coin. Homework. Homer, what, what's your favorite track off of the Ace album? Yeah, because by the time this is aired, most a lot of people will already have it. So yes, what is your favorite track and why? Yep, there you go. Simple, simple homework. That's it. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. See you next. If you week. have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call three two zero five one five. Voices for three sides of the coin. Provided by Larry Davis Voice dot com. And by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.